Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining Robin and I today in regards to talking about how to organize ideas and write an essay either for a college admissions process or for a scholarship essay. The process is very similar, and oftentimes uh, the question is very similar for both essays. So uh, today, before I get started, I want to go ahead and share a quote with you that came from an author, Maya uh, <laughs> Angelou. And uh, Maya Angelou was born in April 4th in 1928 in St. Louis, Missouri. And she is an American poet, a memoirist, an actress, and an important figure in the American Civil Rights Movement. And in 2001, she was named one of the 30th most powerful women in America by the Ladies Home Journal. And she's known for her autobiographies, which include, I Know Why the Cage Bird Sings. And the quote that comes from her today is, there's no greater agony than bearing an untold story inside yourself. I felt like... You know, this quote really applied to what we have to talk to about today because I think so many people have trouble or difficulty writing essays because they view it as a homework assignment because that's how we've been taught in school. Here's the topic, write it. And so we feel like there's a right way and a wrong way to express our ideas because we're so used to being graded on a, a grading scale. And with today, what we're talking about is we're going to further refine the process that we talked about in the earlier videos. And in earlier videos, it was like, okay, here are the questions on the college admissions essay. How do we make sure that we get all these ideas organized? And so I'm going to do a screen share and show you quickly some of the things that we had worked on previously. But pretty much the idea was... We wanted to make sure that we answered all the questions, so we color-coded all the questions. So you can see the bullet points for the purple answer one, the bullet points for the green answer a second question, the bullet points in the pink answer a third question, and the bullet points in the blue answer the fourth question. So the, this was uh, covered more in depth in a previous video. But today we're talking about more about how do you organize those ideas. And uh, just kind of as a recap, this is pretty much what we had done. The whole goal was to make sure that we were answering what the essay wanted us to answer. And so with that being said, um, of course this comes back to how do you write an essay? And I think sometimes you know, we get stuck on writing. I don't have good writing skills. I'm not great at spelling or grammar. But really, we're telling a story. We're telling a story about ourselves and how it applies or how we learn and, you know, how we overcame obstacles and why do we deserve the money or why do we deserve to be admitted into a particular college or university. And so what we did is to break things down simpler. We were in the brainstorming phase. And that's really where the bullet points came from. Every idea equals a bullet point because bullet points are easy to organize. Uh, if you feel like it's not relevant, you delete it, and you don't feel emotionally attached that it's, you know, like, oh, okay, you know, it's in a different format. It makes it easier to organize the information. And so now we're going back and we're revising the essay, and sometimes that can be a little scary or unfamiliar because we're not sure what to do. So today is really about how you focus on revising your essay. And so one of the things that I did is I came up with a format for Robin that I'm going to share with you. Let's do another screen share. And what I did is I took it and broke it down so that each question was like an essay in itself, since this particular essay can be up to 20 pages. Um, so it can be like a collection of four essays. But I also wanted to choose a topic that I felt that people could relate to. And it's also a topic that's likely to be on a lot of scholarships. So the topic is, how will you believe you will face the rigorous demands of coursework and field education in the later, latter case, especially in terms of being able to handle the emotional practical demands of dealing with client community problems? If you have incurred encounter particular challenges in your own life, describe strategies to address these challenges 
as they may relate to your capability to engage in clinical and social work. Let's see if I can enlarge this for you. And so pretty much what I did is I broke it down into the simple essay format with the title and your name written up here. And then I, on the left in the black is the basic structure for an essay. And then what I did is I started filling filling in the answers in the pink. And a lot of this came from the bullet points on the other document that I had showed you. I simply reread that document and then based upon that information, I started plugging it in. And as you can see, there's some blank spots for Robin to fill in because when we were brainstorming, she didn't happen to mention some of this. So this is a good point for her to revise it to think about it. But it's easier for her to add information because there's a formal structure. So pretty much what it starts off with is a topic sentence. Topic sentence for answering this question is in regards to her readiness for undertaking a graduate course. Now in this essay, she's going to tell them what she's going to tell them. She's going to tell it to them and then she's going to summarize what she told them. So the three big ideas that she's going to be discussing in her essay is how I handle emotional and practical demands, how I handle multiple demands at work, and how I handle multiple demands in my personal life. All three of these questions address the main question of the essay. And then down here it shows the transition sentence. So the transition sentence is, my ability to prioritize helps me maintain a balanced life. And then each of these three down here are basically going to break down these sentences right here. So this sentence is going to have a whole paragraph to further explain it. This sentence is going to have a whole paragraph to further explain it. And this sentence right here is also going to have a whole paragraph to further explain it. And so you can see that, you know, I took this sentence and this became the next paragraph. And how I handle emotional and practical demands. And, you know, for Robin writing this is, I organize information so I don't have to rely on my brain to remember everything. This is something that came directly from Robin when we were brainstorming. So these are her ideas. I'm just helping her organize it, fill out this uh, particular form, and then she can carry this format when she formats the rest of her essay. And then, you know, supporting evidence or another supporting idea, number two, I actively seek advice from qualified sources and I take action. In this case, Robin was telling me about her love for a certain kind of book. How not only does she think it's interesting, but she also likes to read the advice to see how it relates to her and how she might be able to take action with the, with this information. And then by engaging, I learn what works and doesn't work, and I make changes. And she's talked a lot about this at her work, some of the places she's worked at. She's had to wear multiple hats, have multiple roles, and have to juggle a lot of different things. And she's constantly thinking about how can I make this better, easier, faster, more organized, or how can I organize the information so that I can find it later and not worried about where it's at. And then her transition into the next one is I implement these habits at work during the 40 hour week. And then her topic sentence for the next one is how I handle demands at work. And since when we were discussing and brainstorming, she didn't really mention any particular ideas. It's okay. We were brainstorming. We were getting ideas out. Now that we're in the process of refining, she knows exactly what information she needs in order to complete this paragraph. So Robin will have time to think about, well, how do I handle the demand at work? And specifically, what are three specific things that I do at work that help me handle, handle it? And then from there, her transition sense will be, you know, I use the same skills at work to be as in my personal life. As in my personal life, as in for okay, technical grammar thing. Sorry. Um, <laughs> and then she'll transition into the next one. How I handle multiple demands in my personal life. And personal life can deal with your friends, your family, relationships. Um, there's all kinds of things that come up. 
And so overall, what Robin's showing is she's showing that you know she's able to maintain balance in different aspects of her life, and because she's able to maintain this balance, that she's a good candidate for for graduate work because she'll be able to stay focused on on what she's learning at school. And that's kind of the summary of what she's talking about. You know, my readiness for undertaking graduate course. And then she's going to summarize basically what she said on top, which is again the idea that she can handle the demands of college because she has these other things in her life balanced. And even if something comes up in her personal life, she'll be able to maintain that balance because she has that support so she can handle a challenging course or college and uh, what they expect of her. And she's going to summarize and end it with, I'm ready to undertake a graduate course. So uh, with that being said, um, I'm going to go ahead and email this document to Robin after this video so that she can work on it and finish filling it in. It's also a document where I will create a blank version and I will send an email out to people who are on my email list and I will also host it on the scholarship membership website uh, so that in the near future when people want access to this information it will be available. It is my hopes and goals that within the next year I will create a lot of videos to help people uh, get ahead and to make progress in their journey for finding and applying for scholarships and then I can either provide an internship or I can pay someone to edit the videos, crop them down into short videos and then create a section in the membership scholarship site where it's like this is the video, this is the worksheet, this is the video, this is the worksheet, this is the video, this is the worksheet. So um, it will take some time but everything's in the process and I'm learning about how do you organize information and use tools on the internet to do so. So please forgive me if I don't have everything up and running right away. This is a learning curve. Um, I also do work, so I, I help people in my spare time. So uh, please be forgiving if everything's not up instantaneously. Um, with that being said, uh, why don't we go ahead and follow up with some of the things you are working on as far as your letters of recommendation and share with everybody some of the exciting things that have happened. All right. Um, yeah. So I, um, as of last, uh, the last video, I talked about having a second meeting with a former supervisor uh, and talking a little bit more about the letter of recommendation that I'd like her to write for me, but also build building and strengthening our relationship because we hadn't seen each other in a while, uh, and. So I had sent her an initial email a couple months ago with just the basics of what uh, Smith School of Social Work wanted out of a letter of recommendation. Um, but the second meeting we, we sat and talked and she really wanted to understand a little bit more about what, what they were asking of me. So she asked for the questions in the personal statement, which is one of the questions is what we just went over. So I actually went and made a more detailed email to her yesterday that um, reminded her once again what they are looking for in a letter of recommendation. I also put all four of the essay questions that are required for the personal statement. Um, and then I also included something that I told her about at the lunch that um, had really made an impact on me and it was getting an employee of the month uh, when I worked under her, um, and it, uh, yeah, it was, it's something that at the time it, it was really helpful for me to, to get because uh, my introduction to that job, there was a lot going on and I didn't really have a lot of training and um, I also, you know, as I've said before, I have a very strong inner critic, so it was really helpful to get outside feedback of what it was that other people saw that I was doing that maybe I couldn't see on my own because I'm just kind of in my head like just keep moving forward and um, also it's it's helped me since when I've had difficult times I've kind of referred to this this award um, because the the words are so nice 
and and concise and and feel very true to who I am. So, um, as a way to practice and challenge my inner critic, uh, I would like to read this on air um, and kind of maybe it will help me get <laughs> it'll help me get into the habit of uh, more a little bit more positive. Uh, thinking about myself and, and getting used to talking about myself in a positive manner. And I know, Crystal, you had mentioned something about how doing this is kind of similar to some of the scholarship videos that are out there. Did you want to? Yes. And here's pretty much um, why I'm encouraging you to read this is because as technology has evolved, I've seen a lot more scholarship videos where people have the opportunity to take a minute to discuss, you know, why they deserve an opportunity or why do they deserve the money. And so a great example is, you know, right now Dr. Pepper, the soda company, is having a scholarship and that's part of the process is putting out the scholarship video. And so, you know, I'm helping someone with that right now and it's fun to watch the videos because a lot of times they're just people talking about this is who I am, these are some of my struggles and challenges in life, this is what I'd like to do, and you know, please help me by, you know, giving me this money to help pay for my college tuition. And I think, you know, it's it's awesome, but I think at the same time, you know, the ability to feel comfortable talking on the camera, being able to talk in video, that's not a skill set we learned in school. But I think it's part of this new economy where the internet plays such a huge role. And I think that, you know, we get better at things that we do over and over again. And so, you know, <laughs> I know that growing up, you know, a lot of us weren't uh, told to speak highly of ourselves. We were taught, you know, oh, you're bragging, you're boasting, don't treat your own horn. And, you know, that may have, some of those messages may have been true. Some of them may have not, not been true. I think there's a difference between talking about yourself and boasting or bragging. And so I think one of the ways to change our behavior is to start role model, modeling successful people. And if there's a lot of scholarship recipients who have gotten scholarships because they've done videos, then you know I think it makes sense for us to travel down that path. And I think by reading uh, an award is a great start to get that practice for a couple of reasons. Uh, number one, everything you're saying is third party endorsed. Uh, someone else wrote wrote this information about you. And so you can't, it eliminates the excuse of, oh, you're just boasting about yourself. It's like, no, this was someone I worked with. This was my supervisor. And my supervisor had really good things to say about me. So I'm not boasting, I'm using this opportunity to acknowledge these wonderful things. And I think it'll help you develop your ability to um, speak and help you build your confidence. And again, the things that we do more and more of, we develop skills, we get better at it, our confidence grows. And this is really about creating skills that will help us you know, while we're applying for scholarships, while we're applying for colleges, while we're in school while we're building our network and when we're also in the job market, either searching or looking for other opportunities or how do we help other people. So it's really about developing a skill set that will help us be successful in the long run. So I just want to applaud you for being willing to read this on air and I'm very excited. So with that, take it away. Okay, so this is from April 2011 and it says, uh, Robin has adapted to her hybrid position very well. Robin has a very pleasant, happy, and friendly demeanor both with staff and client, even when she is in the middle of dealing with myriad of important duties that she is responsible for. Robin goes beyond the call time and time again. She consistently performs high quality work. Robin is organized, efficient, caring, yet firm with clients, a team player, and an organizer of fun activities for staff. She is reliable, earnest, trustworthy, and highly motivated. Yay! That's awesome! <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you for sharing that. Mm -hmm. 
And so I think, you know, this is good, you know, it, it also, you know, it's something that you can always use as a, a reference. I know when I've gone on jobs and, you know, they're interviewing me, they don't know anything about me. I've sent them information beforehand and, you know, an award letter is something that's perfect to include as part of your portfolio. You save it and you make photocopies and then when you apply for a position or, you know, you're looking to network and partner with people, you can send them something in the mail saying, I just want you to know a little bit about me. I appreciate you considering me for this position. And they open it up and they're like, wow, this is a great letter that so-and-so wrote. <laughs> Like, it just adds that credibility. And I think it's important for us to get comfortable with our accomplishments and that other people acknowledge us for our being, especially, too, because oftentimes when people give out scholarships, they want to recognize you. They want to give you that public attention. I know oftentimes scholarship winners are published in a lot of newsletters. They're published on websites. Um, that information is shared with the community. Um, you know, especially I see it a lot with uh, credit unions that give out scholarships to their members or the children of their members, and they want to acknowledge these people in front of a group of their own, their peers. And so I think it's important that we get comfortable with sharing our accomplishments with other people in a positive manner. So I think that's awesome what you did. Um, I think it's awesome that you are being a role model and allowing us to do these video blogging scholarship videos and show people, you know, it is possible, it is a process, it's not something that was done overnight, and we're learning new positive skills that will help us for a long, long time. So with that being said, I want to go ahead and wrap up with that wonderful quote, being that there is no greater agony, agony <laughs> sorry, there's no greater agony than bearing an untold story inside yourself. And with that being said, every person has a wonderful story to tell. And the reason I like scholarship so much is because it's giving people an opportunity to share their story and to have someone say, you know what, I really value your story. I want to give you the money. Or I want to accept you within our college or university because I think you'd be a great addition to the student body and can contribute great conversation. So with that being said, everybody has a story. There's an opportunity for everybody. I think the challenge is sometimes there's so much opportunity that we forget it and we think, oh, you know, I didn't get this one particular scholarship or this one particular opportunity. But there's so many out there. It's really about how do you find a good match? How do you find one where you want them and they want you? Kind of like a relationship. You want it to go two ways. <laughs> so with that being said, uh, thank you everybody for watching us. And we will see you again next week. Bye.